I guess it's now known as Vincent Bajas. And uh, my case is about uh, Titan Construction Corporation uh, versus Unifield Enterprises Incorporated. So the facts about this case is are uh, the petitioner Titan Construction Corporation is engaged in the construction and business. While the respondent uh, Unifield Enterprises Incorporated is engaged in the business of selling uh, various construction materials and supplies. And from 1990 to 1993, uh, the petitioner purchased on credit uh, various construction and construction supplies and materials uh, from the respondent. So the, the petitioner's uh, purchases amounted to uh, 7,620,433 pesos plus 12 cents, uh, but the petitioner was only able to pay uh, 6,215,705 pesos, point, uh, 70, 70 cents. So uh, le leaving a balance of uh, 1 million pesos and uh, 404,637 and 42 cents. So on September uh, 19, uh, 1994, the respondent uh, sent a demand letter for uh, to the petitioner uh, demanding that they uh, pay the outstanding balance, the outstanding obligations, but of course uh, the balance uh, remained unpaid. So uh, on June 26, uh, 1995, the respondent uh, filed with the trial court a complaint uh, for collection of a sum of money plus damages against the petitioner. In its answer uh, dated August 18, 1995, uh, the petitioner admitted the purchases but disputed the amount uh, claimed by the respondent. And the petitioner also uh, interposed a counterclaim and sought to recover uh, 204000 uh, in 527 pesos, point, uh, 99 cents, uh, from the respondent uh, based on the damage of vinyl tiles, the non delivery of materials, and advance for utility expenses, and the juice, and also the insurance premium on the condominium unit, which was supposed to be a turnover by the petitioner to the respondents. So on September 9, uh, 1997, the trial court uh, rendered judgment. Uh, in favor of the respondent uh, based on the following grounds. Uh, number one, the principal amount of uh, 1,404,114 pesos. And number two is the interest charges in the amount of 504,114 pesos plus the cured interest uh, charges at a uh, 24% per annum. A compounded yearly uh, a recon from July 1995 up to the time of full payment. And number three is the liquidated damages in the amount of 324,147 pesos and 94 cents. And number four, the attorney's, uh, the attorney's fees equivalent to the 25% of whatever amount is due and payable. And accumulated appearance fees at uh, 1,000 pesos per hearing. And number five, the cost of suits. <clears throat> so uh, the petitioner asked the court to review the records of the case and re-examine the evidence uh, presented before the trial court and court of appeals. So as a rule, only questions of law may be appealed to the court by uh, petition for review. So uh, the court is not a uh, trier of facts and its jurisdiction being limited to errors of law. Uh, moreover, uh, factual findings of the trial court, particularly uh, when they affirm uh, by the Court of Appeals, are generally binding on this court. So uh, in this case, the factual appeals were based on substantial evidence, which were not refuted with contrary proof uh, by the petitioner. So uh, we just... Uh, so it, uh, it doesn't see any uh, reason for it to uh, disturb the f factual findings of the trial court and the court of appeals. So the issue here is whether or not the court of appeals 
error on finding a legal basis uh, for awarding liquidated damage, liquidated damages, uh, attorney's fees, and interest in favor of respondent. And second is uh, whether or not the Court of Appeals errored by overlooking certain facts of or circumstances of weight and influence, which is considered would alter the results of the case. So it was held. Uh, it was held that the petitioner uh, insists that the trial court and the court of appeals had no legal basis uh, to award the interest and the liquidated damages and the attorney's fees because the delivery receipts and sales invoices, which serve as the basis. Uh, for the award uh, were not formally offered as evidence by the respondent. And the petitioner also alleges that the delivery receipt and sales invoice were in the nature of contracts of adhesion. And the petitioner had no option but to accept the conditions imposed by the respondents. And also on the allegation that, deliver, that the delivery receipts and the sales invoice are in the nature of contracts of adhesion, the court has repeatedly held that contracts of adhesion are as binding as ordinary contracts because uh, those who adhere to the contracts are, in reality, free to reject it entirely. And if they adhere, they give their consent. Well, uh, it is true that on some occasions, the court struck down such contract as void when the uh, when the weaker party is imposed upon in dealing with the dominant party and is reduced to the alternative of accepting the contract or leaving it completely deprived of the opportunity to bargain of on equal uh, on equal footing so uh, considering that the petitioner and the respondent have been doing business from 1990 to 1993 and that the petitioner is at a small time uh, construction supply no, I mean a construction, a uh, small-time construction company. Uh, the petitioner is presumed to have full knowledge and to have acted with due care, or at the very least, to have been aware of the terms and conditions of the contract. So uh, the court, uh, therefore, upholds the validity of the contract between the petitioner and the respondent. However, uh, the court will reduce the amount of the attorney's fees uh, awarded by the trial court and the court of appeals. So uh, in this case, aside from the award of uh, 324,147 uh, and 94 cents as liquidated uh, damages, <clears throat> the trial court and the court of appeals also ordered uh, petitioners to pay uh, the respondent attorney's fees uh, equivalent to the 25% of whatever amount is due and payable. So, on the article uh, 1229 and 2227 of the Civil Code, they empower the courts to reduce the penalty if it is uh, iniquitous or unconscionable. So, the determination of whether the penalty is iniquitous or unconscionable is addressed to the sound discretion of the court and also depends on several factors such as the type, the extent, and the purpose of the penalty, and the nature of the obligation, and the mode of breach, and its consequences. Uh, so the court notes that the respondent had more than adequately protected itself from a possible breach of contract because of the stipulations on the payment of interest, liquidated damages, and attorney's fees. So uh, the court finds the award of the attorney's fees equivalent to 25% of whatever amount is due and payable uh, to be exorbitant because it includes, number one, the principal of uh, 1,404,114 pesos, number two, the interest charges of 504,114 pesos, plus the accrued interest charges at 24% per annum, compounded yearly, uh, recon from July 1995 up to the time of full payment. And number three, liquidated damage, damages of uh, 324,000 and 147 pesos and 94 cents. So moreover, uh, the liquidated damages and the attorney's fees uh, 
serve the con- serve the same purpose is that it is as penalty uh, for breach of the contract. So uh, therefore, uh, the award have been reduced of attorney's fees to 25% of the principal obligation or uh, 351,020 pesos plus 50 cents. So uh, therefore, uh, the therefore uh, they affirmed the appeal decisions uh, dated on the 7th of January 2022 of the Court of Appeals in uh, CA GR CV number of five six eight one six with modification as regards the awards of the attorney's fees. So the petitioner uh, Titan Construction Corporation is ordered to pay uh, the respondent Unifield Enterprises Incorporated the attorney uh, attorney's fees of uh, three hundred fifty one thousand pesos and twenty pesos fifty cents. It was ordered.